Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. May 3rd, free market outlook video. Huge deficits, how to play the inflation trade and follow the smart money. Now, keep in mind, last week was about rebalancing. If you listen to it, you kicked butt on the last day of the month. So, hoping these are working for you. If you like the videos, sign up for our 10-day free trial. It also includes a private Twitter feed. It's been a huge hit. Provides continuity. I post all day and night, so just keep that in mind. So what do I mean about the inflation trade? Well, most of the time in history that the Fed prints this much money, it leads to inflation. Now, that doesn't mean it's leading to it this second, but it just it's something to keep in the back of your mind. And a lot of people want to know how to hedge. One of them is obviously gold. Gold is number one. Gold has gone straight up. And I got to tell you, I, I go on gold and I look at weekly charts and I don't like when it's overbought, but I do like on how it looks on a daily chart. If you're going to play gold, you got to play support and resistance and the odds in your favor. When it's this overbought and you chase it, you're going to lose money. When it forms this kind of thing, yeah, you can start leaning toward gold. But if you don't want to go near gold, the $1,700 product, which is a little rough on you. Obviously, you can play GLD. You're going to see GLD is a little extended as well and way overbought. I go on the MACD. You can use a stochastic, an RSI, anything you want to do, it's way overbought. Every time the gold's overbought and I chase it, I lose money. I'm going to wait when nobody wants it. That's when I like to buy gold. It just works better. In the meantime, there are a number of other ways to play the inflation trade. The first thing I want you to realize is that I like to have three reasons to do something. If I think there's going to be inflation trade, I have to have certain things back me up. This is the first thing I look at. I go into FinViz and I look at all the futures. And when I look at all the futures, the first thing I do is I go to the upper right and I look at daily, weekly, and monthly. When you do this and you scroll down, this is free, I haven't even logged in. You're gonna see there are some things on a daily chart that look a lot better than others. Look at the lean hogs, feeder cattle, live cattle, corn, cocoa, cotton, and you see what's going on here, they're forming nice bases. That's the good news. The bad news is if you look at them on a weekly chart, when you look at a weekly chart, you're going to see, by the way, the equity indexes. Yeah, they had nasty reversal candles at uh, resistance, but we'll see if the Fed backs them up this week. This is what I'm watching. I'm watching things that have very little resistance on the upside, and they stopped going down. What I see on here is that wheat is holding up better than anything. Sugar had a nice rally last week. And if I want to mess with something like corn or lean hogs, that's okay. Everything looks like it's stabilizing. Now, why am I showing you that? I want to show you a group thing, an ETF, two of them we could trade. But the first thing is, and I said this on the lead-in, was about following the smart money. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a thing called commitment to traders. It's free. It's from the CFTC. It comes out. Every weekend, Friday afternoon, close to the weekend, and it updates what the big people are doing. So the way you look at that, and it gets, you could go through it in here, or you could also go just on FinViz. And when you go into things, let's say we're talking about corn, and I like corn. There's three different lines in here. We'll take the daily, and you're going to see the green. That's the commercial hedgers. Those are the smart people, the people that are actually out in the farms. The large traders and the small to me are the dumb money, especially the large traders. What do you notice in corn? Well, number one, you see it stopped going down like I told you. Number two, you're going to notice the green line is hardly ever above zero. It's above zero now. When it was way under zero, yep, you had big sell-offs. When it got above zero, you had a massive rally. What are you noticing now? Yep, commercials are long for the first time in a year. 
Guess what? Move this over and look at corn again. And go look at an hourly chart. Well, that sure looks like a bull flag to me. So now you have that I have a room a theory about inflation. These are stocks that stop going down and they have bull flags on short-term charts and the commitment of traders is lean long. That's why I sort of like the idea of corn. Let me give you a different one in here. Lumber. Yep, I can't believe lumber with all the prospects of possible, uh, you know, possible recession. I don't know why it's going up, but here we go again. Commercials are long. Last time they were long like this, they had a big pop from 300 to 400. Now they're long again. So when they were real short, yeah, you got killed. So lumber is on my list, plus it looks pretty good on a chart. I'll give you one more in here. Sugar. Now, sugar isn't perfect, but it's an, at a nice rally on a daily chart. And as you see, the commercials are starting to get long. When they're really long, it goes really up. So, and, and this is another interesting thing. Let's say you don't want to buy it. Well, heck, you see where not to buy it. That's why, I mean, that's where you don't buy it. You don't buy it when the commercials are against you. You can buy in here when the commercials are on your side. So just keep that in mind. So there are two things other than gold I'm watching carefully. The first thing I'm watching is the DBA. That's the Agricultural ETF. So if you want to play the Agricultural ETF, the best way to play it is to buy options in it. If you go into a daily and you'll see it's trying to form a bottom and it also has positive MACD divergence, and this could be a wedge. The cheapest way to play it is not to play every tick. It's to go in here and you go in and you buy something like the July 13 calls. They hardly have any premium. And you pay around a buck. If you're wrong, you're going to lose a buck. In fact, if you're wrong on a dollar, you're going to lose 30 cents. That's it. But if you're right, you'll double your money. I'm not saying to go buy them. I'm telling you that's a cheap way to take care of it. That's agricultural any no, uh, that's agricultural only. This is the DBC. This includes oil. This includes Brent and WT oil. It also includes grains and, and metals. But obviously it's gotten battered because of oil. Well, you know what? Oil has been acting terrible, but the oil stocks have been going crazy. They're forecasting that oil is going to go back up, not down. So this is the risky way. If you think oil is going to follow oil stocks, this has gone from a from down to from 14 and a half to 10. Keep in mind this also has options. The July 10 calls have hardly any premium. That's another way to play it. So you could buy DBA or DBC if you want to try to participate. As you see, they trade a lot of volume. Now, you might say, I just want to buy corn. Well, there's ETFs for that. There's the corn ETF. It only trades 52,000 shares. This is the bid and ask after the close. That's not fair. As if you go into corn, you see the bull flag as well. So if you're right on that bull flag, that's about 40 cents. The problem is the options you could drive a truck through. So you can't really buy the options. You would have to buy the corn ETF. So you either buy the DBA, that's a grain ETF, the DBC that includes crude oil, or you go and buy corn, or you could buy wood. That's the lumber ETF. So definitely, definitely you could buy, watch the lumber ETF. The big problem I have with the lumber ETF is how similar it looks to the Russell and the ESE futures, very similar. So if these break, probably wood will break. But it is something that if you want to play lumber, that's the way to play it. I think the best of these right now is corn, no doubt about it. Other things, and this is a big deal to me. Let's say you want to play bonds because you think long-term bonds yielding 1.5% is a joke. It is a joke. Not throwing in anything that can happen in the next... 30 years. Where are you going to see it first? Probably going to see it in the agricultural. If you see this really bust above the ATR trailing stop and you don't play DBA, 
you're probably going to see the bonds not break up, but break down. These are the longer term bonds. If you see the grains do what I think they're going to do, and you see corn and you see wheat and you see cotton and sugar blow to the upside, and this hasn't gone down yet, then you have to look to buy puts in the TLT. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm first going to see if commodities have a bump. Usually they lead the uh, 30-year bond. So if I see those break up, I'm going to look to go into like August and look at some kind of put spread in TLT to buy. I hope you like this video. Like I said, I think what the Fed is doing, I think what they're doing is right. I just think it creates a lot of inflation in the long run. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.